So some introduction. Um, I'm here to teach Python programming, okay? Or let me just say programming for now. I'm here to teach programming because it is going to be a part of the competition that you are taking, okay? Um, the competition is mainly math, science, I believe, and they are adding programming. If I believe you all know that programming is an interdisciplinary kind of program, right? It's not math, it's not science, but it has a combination of different things. And one thing it has as well, which you usually not find in your normal subjects, is computational thinking. So programming pulls from different things to make it happen. One thing I want you to know is that programming is not a theory course, okay? Everything I'm going to do, you can't just watch and learn, <laughs> or you can't just listen and learn. You have to do, okay? Um, during the competition, they are not going to ask you things like, how is this done, or list these number of things, or how many know. There's going to be no theory questions. Every question is going to be practical. Create this, write a program that will do this, um, write a program that will do that, okay? So... As much as possible, know that this you can only achieve programming skills by doing. Okay, it's not by reading and it's not by hearing as well. So, whatever we are doing, make sure that um, if you can't do it while I'm doing it, make sure that you do it after I do it. Okay, <clears throat> um, also, I am I'm, I'm aware that most of you, I'm aware that most of you are. Going to write your is it wasi? I don't do it. Is it is it wasi? Can someone help me? You are going to write your wasi, right? West Africa certificate examination. So, so I'm aware that most of you are going to write your wasi, and yeah, it's B C. B C. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm aware that most of you are going to write your B C. So, um. I'll ask you to be wise in balancing this and your BC. You get me? You're, learn, you're learning for your BC, okay? And make sure that you get the best out of the two. And I want to wish you all the best, first of all, in your BC as you prepare for it. Um, God be with you. God help you to pass. Learn hard and do the best that you can. I also want to wish you the best in the learning of this program, getting ready for the competition. All the best. Okay. Now let's let's begin. We'll start with a quick introduction. Okay. I'll quickly talk about a few things and then we go. Now, if someone should ask you what is programming? Now programming is essentially okay, people keep joining, so I'll keep letting them in. Programming is essentially giving a set of instructions to a computer in a way it can what understand for it to execute a particular task or a series of tasks leading to a desired output. Okay, please, I'll ask that everybody mute. Everybody mute yourselves, okay, so that I don't get any feedback. Well, yeah, while I'm teaching, kindly make sure you mute yourself. We will go into the programming very, very soon. I'm just giving you some background, okay? Okay. This knowledge that I'm giving to you is something you can find on Google, okay? There is nothing special about what I'm going to say right now, okay? So. There will be, there will be a recorded version of it. Oh. Please, let's mute ourselves there. Uh, I beg you. Else my ears will suffer. <laughs> Let's mute ourselves. Okay, for now, I'm not showing anything. Okay, those who are saying they, they can't see. I'm quickly giving you a brief introduction and then we go into the programming. Okay, so I'm not showing anything. And feel free to ask me a question in the chat section. Okay, if you want to ask a question, just write it in the chat and I'll address it, okay? All right. Also, for those who joined, um, who just joined, as I said, it's helpful if 
the name or your name that I see is the name of your school. Okay, so that I know who is who. Okay, let's go on. As I said, programming is essentially giving instructions to a computer. Okay, so what you are all you are going to be doing while programming is you are going to be giving instructions to a computer. Why do you give instructions to a computer? Because you want a certain task to be achieved. You want something to happen. And for that thing to, to happen, you need to tell the computer what you need. Apart from that, you need to tell the computer how you need it. So programming is giving the instructions to the computer in a way that the computer would understand. And that's where programming languages come in. Now, there are so many programming languages, but what we are going to be learning is Python programming. Python programming. Python like the snake and then normal programming. So Python programming. It has nothing to do with the snake, so don't worry about that. Now, Python is a server-side high-level programming language. Okay? Python is a what? It's a server-side high-level programming language, which is used um, for web development. Okay? That developing websites or any document on the web okay um, it's also used for ai which is artificial intelligence it's used for machine learning it's used for developing operating systems it's also used for building mobile applications and also for creating video games okay so that's a few things that you can use python for now i said that python is a server side high level language so what do i mean by server side Basically, um, server the server side is basically talking about anything that happens on the side of the server. So, every application that you use, okay, has two faces. It has the front end and the back end. The front end is the part where you can see, you can interact with, you can press. The, the, the things that you can see on your apps, okay, the things you can touch, the things you can click. Everything that is happening, okay, that you, you can interact with is known as the front end. And there are languages that are used to what, create the front end. <clears throat> now, there are things happening at the back of the, of the program, which you can't see. Okay, so all the things happening at the back of your program, which you can't see, is called the, the server side. Okay, this is usually not even on the phone. Okay, it is somewhere... On a remote server or on a large computer somewhere that then sends information onto your phone so the things on the server side so Python is a what server side language Python doesn't create the buttons Python doesn't create um, all these things all the things you can see touch and interact with it's not created by what Python okay so we are going to learn a server side language okay <clears throat> now Um, so I'm talking about front end and back end. So let's go into Python. How do we get Python? Okay. How do you get Python languages? So um, fundamentally, to start anything in Python, you have to download the Python software. So you go online and you type something like Python download. Okay. You you need to download the Python software. And then there are some things called IDEs. IDEs are basically integrated development environment. Okay, integrated development environment. This is basically the environment where you create your programs. Okay, the environment where you create your programs. Now, for the purpose of this, um, the purpose of the competition and for our lessons, we are going to use a lightweight IDE. Okay, we are not going to use anything complicated or anything that might not work on some computers. Okay, we are going to use a very, very lightweight IDE, which is not complicated, not sophisticated, something that everybody can use. Okay, and that is Tony. Tony, T H O N N Y. So I'm going to. So to get access to Tony, it is pretty simple. You go online and then you type Thony. That's T H O N N Y. Okay. And you can type maybe Thony download or download Thony. Right. To 
once you get access to Thony, so I'm going to show you how to download your Thony, and then we will start. Okay, I just realized that I didn't mention my name. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm in a hurry to just dive into the lesson. My name is Triumph. Okay, T R I U M P H, Triumph Tete. That is my name. Okay, so to download the IDE, note that the IDE that we are using is a lightweight IDE. Lightweight means that it's very simple to use, okay? And it can work on practically a lot of computers. It's not sophisticated. So you can go to Google and type Tony Download, okay, to, to get access to it. Um, I hope you can all see my screen because now I'm sharing my screen. We have, we have started a serious work. Once you go to Tony Download, where you type that in Google, your first link, you see Tony.org tony.org okay this is where you go to download the software that we are going to be using okay there are other softwares like PyCharm, visual studio and many more okay but we are going to use this this is very simple when you when you develop in programming and you are doing more sophisticated things you will definitely move on to more sophisticated what ideas okay but for now for simplicity's sake, we are using Thony. So if you are using a Windows PC, you click on Windows, okay, and then you would install the software that you download. If you are using a Mac PC, you click on Mac. If you are using a Linux P PC or a Linux PC, you click on what? Linux, okay? Um, if you are not seeing something clearly and you need me to repeat something kindly let me know okay okay awesome so i am using a mac pc right so i'll just click on mac and then it will download okay all right i already have it on my pc so i'm going to continue now the installation of tony is very simple you just have to run it <clears throat> okay noted noted maxwell thank you Hey. Someone said they can only see green screen. Okay, please, can you see my screen? If you can see my screen, if you can see my PC screen, what I'm showing, kindly say, send a chat to me saying that we can see. I want to know the number of people who can really see because some are saying they can't see. If you can see my screen, send me a chat and say we can see. If you can see my screen, please send me a chat and say we can see. Okay. So, those who are seeing green screen, please, it looks like it's not from me. It is from your end. Okay. 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 I think, I think a, a, a good number of people can see. So, my people, my people who can't see. Kindly check your PC, okay? Okay, so I'm continuing, right? I am continuing. Also note that I'm using a Mac PC, so some things on my PC might be a little different from yours, okay? Kindly keep that in mind. Okay, let's continue. So once you've downloaded your Thony, can you click on the application, okay? It will save in your downloads, okay? It will save in your downloads, which you should know where downloads it. Can you go into your downloads, click on the software, and just install it like you install any normal software or any normal game or anything that you've installed in the past, okay? It's pretty simple. Okay, now... Okay, now once you've once you've installed, um, let me once 
once you've installed Python, hey, once you've installed Sony, okay, this is what you see. Once you've installed Sony and you open it, kindly note that this is what you will see. Okay, you see something that looks like this. You will see Untitled at the top and you see a place called Shell down here. Okay, Untitled and then what? Shell. Untitled is your scripting document. Okay, this is where you are going to write your program. So, yeah. Okay. Now, the Shell is basically the result of your code after you run your code okay this is where the results will appear right anything you do this is where it will what it will show if you if there's an error this is where the error will appear if there's a result this is where the result will what will appear okay okay let me keep my chat close by so that people sending me chats i can see Okay, awesome. Awesome. So let's continue. So now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to save your file. Okay, now Python has a file extension of .py. That's .py. If you are using um, Excel, Excel has a file extension of .xls. Um, um, text files, okay. Have a file have a file extension of .txt, okay. Microsoft Word files have a file extension of .doc. That's .doc, okay. Um, 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 PowerPoint presentations they have a file extension of .ppt, okay. So Python files have a file extension of .py, okay. So we are going to save the file, okay. Now. Before that, in case you want to create a new file, all you have to do is to go to File, and then you go to New. If you need to create a new Python file, maybe you mistakenly um, deleted your file, and you need to create a new file, you just go to New, and then you create a new file. It's just like if you are using Microsoft Word, okay, or if you are using a normal text file. Now, if you want to save it, there are some ways you can save it. On your PC, you can hold Control and press S, that will save it like normal save if you are saving um, um, anything on your PC control s should always save it if you want to save it in a more step-by-step -step manner you go to file then you click save a hey, save us okay just like any word file you will save so when you click on save us it will bring up where the saving is going to happen Okay, or where it is saving the file. So then you choose a location to save the file. Okay, let me, I think I should share my entire desktop for you. Rather, I think that would make things a bit easier. Okay. Okay. So, once you do the save, you are saving it. It is now going to ask you where do you want to save it, right? So I'm going to save this on my desktop, okay? So now you give it a name, okay? Give it a name. Note that it says format.py.pyw.pyi. So these are the, the, the different formats, right? These are the different formats um, of your Python file, okay? So I'm going to save it as um, BBQ, right? BBQ lessons, okay? So I'm just naming the file, that's all. So you can see it over here. So you can see it over here. So let's begin, okay? Um, let's begin. Now, there are a few things that, there are a few rules that I want you to know about Python, okay, and how Python is used. The first is indentations. Can you hear me? The first is what? Indentations. Now, indentation is basically like, um, the space you leave for a paragraph, right? 
So for example, when you are writing in Python, let's say you want to print something on the screen, right? I'll say print hello world, okay? Python is saying that do not leave an indentation. That is, don't do something like this, okay? Do not leave what spaces in at the in front of your program. Please, I listening. Python says that don't leave what spaces in front of your program. Now, the reason why you shouldn't leave spaces is because Python recognizes spaces as a way of continuing your code to form a block of code. So, for example, if I'm writing a code like this, if, um, let's say, hello, right, then I'll do something like this. Do you see what will happen? The program automatically leaves what? A space for me. Because it recognizes that I am continuing one line, like one, one code. I'm creating a block of code. Okay, so I can write here, print this. Then I just write something in it. So rule number one, when you are writing a line of code, okay, when you are writing what? A line of code, do not indent the code. Do not do your indentation and write something like this. Do you get me? This space here, Python is going to flag it as an error. Please, do you understand? Okay. Awesome. So, rule number one. Do not what? Indent your line of code. You only indent, okay, when you are creating a block of code. And with that, Python will automatically create it for you. Okay? Python will automatically create that indentation for you where you need it. Okay? Please, um... If I'm still moving fast, kindly alert me that I'm moving too fast, okay? I'll try to slow it down here and there, but if I'm still moving fast, kindly alert me because sometimes I forget the speed at which I'm moving, okay? Okay, and if you can't hear too, do alert me. Okay, so rule number one, no indentation, right? No indentation unless you are creating a block of code where, and at that point, Python will what? automatically create it for you okay now let's now number two to end a line of code you just have to move to the second line okay if you are writing let's say you write this line of code and you're writing another line don't come and write it here right all you have to do is to what move to the next line okay to what write a new line of code just move to the next line or to write a new command all you have to do is to move to the next line okay so each each command should happen on what on one line okay kindly take note of that now secondly you can create comments in your program comments or notes or sometimes you can deactivate a line of code for it to act as a comment. So, for example, this is, this is just a normal print command, okay, that I'm writing. If I want to leave a note in my program and I don't want that note to affect the program, what I can do is that I can do, I can create this um, hash sign, okay, then I can write a comment. You get it? Once I create that hash sign, anything I write on that line is a comment. Do you get it? A comment means that it is not a program, so it will not run. So if I should run this code, I'll press play, okay? And you can see it prints the statement, hello world, but it ignores the comment that I created, okay? Hope you can all hear me. It ignores the comment that I was that I created. So to create a comment in your code, all you need is the word is, is the hash sign, and then you can write your comment. Now, if I have an existing code and I want to deactivate that code, I can go and put the comment sign in front of that code and automatically change that line of code into a comment. 
Do you see that? So that is a good way to sometimes test what is happening to your code. Let's say you have a, a series of lines of code, right? And you are not sure which line is misbehaving. You, you, get, you can test the lines, right? By commenting the ones that you suspect out and see if your program runs fine. And then comment this, comment that, comment this, deactivate this, deactivate that, so that you can tell, okay, which line of code is what is misbehaving or is not working properly, hence messing up my program. So commenting comes in handy. Now, sometimes you want to comment multiple lines at the same time. So, for example, let's say I have... multiple lines and I want to comment this as one I don't want to comment this particular line and then come and comment this line too right I want to comment it as one or you want to comment an entire paragraph with that you use this you use the quotation three quotations on top and then three at the bottom okay this then deactivates this line of code. Now, if I run it, nothing shows in my shell, okay? There are no results. It no longer recognizes it as a what? As a program for it to run, okay? So this allows you to what? Comment to, 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 to create a paragraph of comments. So you have this. I can see um, this is a paragraph. Allows me to okay, so something like this allows you to comment what multiple lines. Okay, okay. Now let's move on. Let's let's continue with something called data types. Okay, in programming, you are going to create data one way or the other everything that you are doing you are creating what information you are trying to use some information okay so we are going to talk about the different types of data okay we are just going to mention a few and then uh, I'll mention the useful ones and then I'll show you how they look like okay so for example the first one that we're going to look at is a string okay a string is basically a text. It's a text type of data. For example, what you saw me do earlier, print hello world, okay? This is a text type of data. And the way you create text data is by having the um, inverted commas, okay, around the text, okay? So anytime you want to, what? use a text type of data or create a text okay data you use what the inverted commas around it so if i want to i just have to do this and then type what hello well okay so this gives me the text type of data now if i take a number and i put it in inverted commas that number is now a text it's no longer being recognized as a number yes it's a number to you but to the program it recognizes as what as a text right so note that once it goes in inverted commas it becomes a text type of what data and this data is called a string okay a string so anytime you have some information in inverted commas it's called what a string okay it's called a string now, the second type of data that we are going to look at is the integer. Is the integer. An integer is basically um, positive and negative numbers, including zero. Right? So, um, let's say I write 12. 12 is an integer. I write minus 1. It's an integer. I write 4. It's an integer. I write 0. It's an integer. Okay? So... That is that. So that's that for integers. Now we have 
so let me just write the name here so integer okay uh, let me also say that the 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 keyword for these so for example string the keyword for string is str okay and um, we'll use it later but i'm not going to use it now so just keep that in mind the keyword for integer is int okay and you can also call it the constructor or the constructor for string is str the constructor for integer is int another data type is float okay float has to do with decimals okay so if you have something like 2.5 it's a float 0 0.4 it's a float um 0 0.03 it's a float so you know that there's a difference between what integers and floats yes they are all numbers but floats deals with what decimals okay and integers deals with um, positive and negative numbers including zero and it doesn't involve decimals let's keep that in mind then the next thing is complex or you would say complex numbers okay um i'm not sure whether you've done complex numbers in school but anytime you try to find the square root of minus one if you if any of you have attempted to find a square root of minus one if you try to do it with a normal calculator it tells you error or something but if you do it with a scientific calculator okay you will get um, a certain number which will be a complex number okay so this is how a complex number usually looks like okay it has a number and it has the symbol j attached to it okay so complex 2 is a data type but you are hardly going to use this data type um, currently another data type that you'll be using is list okay and the keyword for list is list itself okay now um this allows you basically a list allows you to store items so something like this you can have let's say one two three four five okay so this is a list of numbers right this is a list of numbers you can have a list of you can have a list of let's say fruits right so you can have apple um banana not sure i spelled the banana right but hey orange okay so this has to do with a list okay now apart from the list there are other forms of lists there's, there's another data type called set okay now a list and a set are very similar so i won't go deep into it a list and a set are very similar they just work in different ways or they have different limitations what they can do and what they can't do apart from that we have tuple okay a tuple too is kind of like a list and it's kind of like a set but it also has its own limitations and you realize that the difference between these things are or just by viewing them you can tell that the list uses the square bracket. The set uses the curly bracket. The tuple uses the what? The normal bracket that we all know. Okay. Then we have another one called dictionary. Okay. Now the dictionary um, basically allows you to pair items. Okay. So with a dictionary, you can have something like name. Um, coffee then you can have sorry and you can have age note that we are going to do these things into detail okay right now I'm talking about data types so I'm giving you an overview of the types of data that you'll be finding while you write your pro while you write your program and then we can have age and we can have something like 13 okay so this is a dictionary what this means is that name and coffee is is one item okay but they've been paired this means that when i ask for name i'll i'll 
automatically get Kofi. And what and when I ask for age, I'll automatically get what 13, right? Okay, that's great. Now another thing to another data type that we'll be using is something called <coughs> Boolean. Okay, which will have the keyword boo. Okay, now Boolean, let me write the full thing here so that you guys can see. Now, Boolean is basically um, true or false. So that's basically it, okay? It allows you to use the data true or false in your program, okay? Then we, ha then we have things like range, okay? Now, when I do something like range 6, okay, that means that I mean a range of 6 items or a range of 6. Now, in programming, when you are counting, you count from 0, okay? So, if I say a range of 6, it will start from... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? Because that fifth item now becomes a sixth item because I started from what? From 0, okay? So let's have that in mind. Okay, now let's move on. Is it that new people are joining or old people keep leaving and joining again? Because I keep accepting. Okay. Note that this is just the foundation. We are just touching on something just to get your mind accustomed to what you are going to be doing, okay? Now, let's look at variables, okay? So, we are done with data types. I didn't show you all the data types, but I've shown you the very common ones, which you are likely to meet um, in our lessons, okay? Now, let's look at variables, okay? Now, what is a variable? A variable is basically, um, you can call it a container that allows you to store data, okay? It's a container or it is something that you use to represent something else at the end of the day. So let me show you. For example, I can create a variable or a container called name, right? And in this name, I can store, in this variable, I can store my name, triumph, okay? You will identify that this is a string, right? Because we just learned data types, okay? So you identify that this is a string. How do you know it's a string? Because I put the quotation marks around it, okay? Okay, I put a quotation mark around it. So this is my variable. I've created a variable called name. The variable is just a container. It's like a vessel, okay? And then... And the name and the, and the triumph is the data. This is a string, a string data. The triumph is the string data that I am storing in the name, in the name variable. Hope you follow. Okay. So that is simply what a variable is. A variable is a container that stores data. We will later go in, into how you can manipulate things in a variable. But for, for now... Just know that a, a variable is a container that was stores data. Now, there are some rules to naming variables, okay, or creating variables. Not just rules, but just safe zones or, or, or ways to be safe when you are creating um, variables. Some are rules, some are just conventions, okay, that will make your life easy. So, one, you need to know that a variable is case sensitive. For example, if I say A is equal to, and I store the string Kofi, right? And I say capital A is equal to, and I store the number 20. Note that here I'm storing two different data types, okay? I'm storing a string Kofi, and I'm storing an integer 20, okay? Kindly, um, um, hope you are noticing that now even though a even though this is a and this is also a what is happening is that one is a small a and the other is a big a right so if i say print a it's going to print kofi and not 20 so what this you see if you look in my shell it printed what kofi now if i change this to capital a let me clear my shell. If I change it to capital A and I run it, 
this time it printed 20 all right so you need to note and take note that a variable is case sensitive okay it identifies small a and capital a as two different variables it identifies what small a and and capital a as what as two different variables okay so let's keep keep that in mind now a variable can be just a letter it can be a combination of letters that means it, it can be a word it can be a word that exists or a word that doesn't exist okay it can be a combination of um, words and numbers okay it can you can also add things like the period sign okay I've, you should not use punctuation characters a hey, non punctuation characters okay non punctuation characters when dealing with what variables so you can use things like the period so i can create a variable like um people dot name right i can create something like this and then store something inside i can create this variable and then what store something inside okay okay now one thing that you need to know about variables is that the name of a variable needs to be it's not a rule but it's wise to make sure that your variable describes whatever is being stored in it for example if i'm if i'm storing fruit right if I want to store a fruit, let's say I want to store apple, it, it makes sense for me to name the variable fruit. Do you get it? Okay. It will be, it will not be wise for me to write number. Okay. To create a variable called number and then store the word apple in it. Do you get me? It doesn't describe what it is containing. Do you get it? Okay. Now, Apart from the variable being descriptive, okay, as in the variable should sort of communicate what is in it, sometimes you need more words to communicate what the variable is, okay? So, for example, let's say um, instead of writing fruits, I want to write round fruits, okay, round fruits. I can do something like this. I can do something like this round fruit okay so let's say the container is round fruit okay and I'm storing apple in it right I have written round fruit so the round fruit gives you an idea a better idea of why the why I stored apple inside the variable called or inside this variable now, some few ways to use multiple um, um, words, okay? Use multiple word variables is one, you can use the camel case, okay? Or the camel case approach. Now, the camel case approach basically means that any other word you introduce, introduce it should start with a capital letter, okay? So, let's say you are creating... A variable round fruit okay it's advisable not to use round fruit like this where the F is a small letter rather you should use round fruit where the F is a capital letter this tells whoever is looking at your program that oh it's round and what it's a fruit it's two separate words that you are putting together as one okay so so this is called the camel case okay you don't have to remember the name that I am saying okay you just need to know how to use it okay okay please kindly mute yourself and eh? someone's microphone is, is is on I beg you else you are disrupting okay thank you hello okay I guess I have to mute the person
Okay, hope we are all on mute. Okay, awesome. Let's continue. So, over here, um, I've introduced you the camel case, right? Approach to creating multiple word variables. Now, another approach is called the snake case for some reason. Now, this is the one that I like using, where you separate the two words with an underscore. Okay, so if you want to write round fruit, you use round underscore fruit. Okay, that's the one that, that I usually prefer. It easily comes to me. So, two ways, okay, that I'm telling you that you can create is one, the camel case where every new word after the first word starts with a capital letter or the snake case where there's an underscore before the second word. Now, if you want to add a third word, you just have to repeat the same thing. So, really, if you are using the camel case, then it's going to be this and then this, okay? Note that the first letter of the variable is always a small letter. The first letter, that is the, your variable should always start with a small letter. It's not a rule, it's just safer, okay? If your variables, your variables are always in what? Small letters by default, okay? You are safe, you are sure that, okay, your, your variables always start with what? A small letter. In fact, your variables are always in small letters. It saves you a lot of headache in the long run. Okay. Now, you realize that I've been using this thing a lot, print, right? I just write things inside and I write print, okay? Now, the print command, or you can say the print function, okay? You understand why you can use print command or the print function. I'll explain that later. But the print command basically allows you to display things in, onto your shell, okay? Because Python is a back-end programming language, you will usually not need to display things in Python. Do you get me? Inside Python itself, you would usually not to you usually not need to display things. But when you are learning to program in Python, when you are doing things like this, you have to see what you are doing. You have to see the results of what you are doing. So hence, the print command comes in handy. The print command becomes very useful because it allows you to print your results onto the serial monitor. That's why you always see me using print because that is the way to what? Display your results onto your serial monitor. Now, you now know how to create variables. Okay, now let's assign values to variables. Let's see of the ways we can assign values to variables. When I say assigning values to variables, I just mean putting the data inside the variable. Now you have created your variable. You know how to create variables. Now, how do you put your data inside your what? Your variable. It's very simple. So let's go. And you've already seen me do it. So for example, um, let's say school. Now let me use name. If I want to store my name, I just use the equal to sign, right? So the equal to sign is an assignment operator. It is used to what assign. I am using it to what assign a value to the variable. Take note of the words that I'm using. It's used to what assign a value to the variable. So if I write my name, triumph. Okay. Over here, what I'm saying is that the variable is name, and I'm assigning what the string, the data type string. I'm assigning the data string triumph to the variable name. Okay, so this means that at this point, I've stored triumph inside name. If I print name, right, if I type print name, basically what I'm doing is that I am printing the value of the name. I'm not printing the variable. Nobody needs the variable to do anything, okay? You need the value in the variable. So when I print name, I'm basically printing what? The value in the variable. The value in the variable. Okay. Okay. So that is that. Now I could store, let's say, age. Right? 
age. I'll store it the same way. Right? So I can say print age. Okay? This means that I'm printing the value of age. And the value of age is 31. So print age and you see what? 31 in my shell. Okay? Kindly make sure that you can see both my scripting area and my shell. Okay? Now, if let's say um, I wanted to store, create multiple values, eh, create multiple variables and store multiple values in these variables. So let's say we are creating Kofi, we want to store Kofi's age, we want to store Ames' age. Now, over here, I'm using the snake type of creating what? Um, the snake case of creating my variable. So I'm writing Kofi age, okay, so that you know that I'm trying to store a value that is Kofi's age. I'm my age. I'm trying to store a, a, a value that is Amas age. Then let's say John John age, okay. In what I'm doing is that I'm trying to store variables, a hey, store values into different what variables all on one line okay so i can do something like this 30 31 32 okay when i do this i'm saying that okay store 30 inside coffee age store 31 inside ama age and store 32 inside what john age so when I come here and I say print, sorry, when I say print coffee age, and I'll say print what am I age, and then print John age. Okay. If I should run this. You see, it first printed coffee age, which is 30, printed Ama age, which is 31, sorry, and printed John's age, which is 32, right? So over here, I have been able to use one line of code to store or to, to create three variables and then store three values inside those um, variables, right? Okay, now take note that I don't put any quotation sign around the variable because quotation is meant for what? Strings, okay? The variable is not a string. The variable can contain a string, but the variable itself is not a string, okay? So kindly keep that in mind, okay? Now, let me erase this. Now, also note that apart from creating multiple variables and assigning um, different variables to different values, sorry, to these variables, you can also create multiple va variables and assign one value to all of them. So if I bring back the coffee age and stuff, I can use just one if, let's say, they all have the same age. If they all have the same age, right? And I do this. This means that I'm storing 30 for all of them. So if I run this, you see what's going to happen. Come in. Okay, let me go up front. If I can. Coffee age, I'm at age. 
I got an error here. Okay, sorry, let's, let's hold on with that, okay? Now, you can assign um, a list of variables or a list of items into one variable. So let's say I do number, okay? And um, I have something like this, right? I have, let's say, okay, let me, let's use a fruits example. Okay, okay, so with this, we will come back to the previous example. I don't want to take time to look at the code, else it will take our time. So I'll look at it later and then we will do it again. So that was assigning one value to multiple variables. Okay, so keep that in mind. That was assigning one word value to multiple variables. So we are skipping that and we are going to unpacking a list of. Um, a list of variables okay so let's say we have fruits uh, new people keep joining so let's say we have a list of fruits let's create a list okay I've already spoken to you about um, the list type of data so let's say we have list we have banana we have orange let's end here okay then let's say we want to put each of these items okay so there's a list of fruits right we want to put each of these items into um, a variable so let's say we have a variable called um, let's say sweet fruits okay and let's say we are going to give that sweet fruit to Apple, right? Then let's say we have another one called um, healthy fruits, but not really. <laughs> I'm just trying to do something. So we have healthy fruits, right? Then we have, um, let's say round fruits. Doesn't matter. I'm just using hypothetical names, okay? Now we can say, okay, Sweet fruits, healthy fruits, and round fruits is equal to what? Fruits, right? Note that fruits contains a list of fruits. That is the three fruits that we have mentioned. Apple, banana, and orange, okay? Now, if we have sweet fruits, now we are saying that, okay, sweet fruits, healthy fruits, assign fruits to sweet fruits, healthy fruits, and round fruits. What this will do is that, it will store apple in sweet fruits, store banana in healthy fruits, and store orange in what? In round fruits, okay? So if I do print sweet fruits, right? I can do print um, healthy fruits, and then I can do print round fruit okay let me clear this okay now if i should do this and i should run it you see sweet fruits will give you apple healthy fruits will give you banana and round fruits will give you what orange let me just take it again so <clears throat> what happened is that we created a list of fruits and we stored it inside the variable fruits, right? Then we said that, okay, let's create new variables. Okay, three variables. And let's assign fruits, that list, that variable that we are storing the fruits in. Let's assign that variable as now the value to three variables. So what happens is that because it is all about the values and not the variables, it takes the values and it shares the values among the variables, the new variables that we have created in this order, apple, banana, orange. So it's, it starts as sweet fruit, healthy fruits, brown fruits. That's why down here we, we can get apple, banana, orange when we printed sweet, 
healthy and well. Okay. Now, note that all, all this while, all we have been doing is we have been outputting the variables or we have been printing the variables, but it doesn't really print the variable. It prints the value in the variable, okay? Now, sometimes you might want to add something. Please note that if you want to ask me a question, kindly send it to the chat, okay? If you have a question, kindly send it to the chat. Also note that the video is being recorded, so once we are done, I'll send it to you so that you can go over it. Okay, now, sometimes, um, when, it's, when we are left with 10 minutes, I will pause for you to ask questions, okay? Just in case someone is waiting to ask a question at the end, I'll pause for you to ask questions. Okay, but feel free to send the questions to the chat if you need to. Okay, let me continue. Um, now, sometimes you will need to attach something to the variable. So, let me do an example. For instance, let's say you want to print the sweet fruits, but you don't want to just print it. You want to say, I like, you get me? So, you are going to create a text, right? And you can see that I'm using the inverted commas, right? That means that I'm creating... Um, a type of data which is what a text so I like right so I want to say I like Apple and notice that Apple is being stored inside what sweet fruit so I'm going to say I like plus this plus character acts as a way of joining it's a joiner okay it allows you to join what things over here we are joining the string I like and we are joining the string Apple Okay, that's from, from here. We are joining the string I like and we are joining the string what? Apple. So, if I run this, it will say I like Apple. Now, note that I left the appropriate amount of space in order to get the text to look like this. I wrote I like, then I left a space before I brought the plus and the sweet fruit. Okay, so... If, if I didn't bring the space, it would have joined the like and the apple, which is not what we want. Okay. Now, if I wanted to say something here, I can say, I do not like, right? Then, and then I'll add the plus, and then it will say, I do not like what? Banana. If I wanted to write maybe something here, buy me some. Right, so if I run it, you can see I like apple, I do not like banana, buy me some orange, right? So over here, we have added something to our variable, right? Note that the value of the variable is what will be printed. The variable itself will not be printed, okay? Because the importance of the variable is in the value and not in the variable itself okay okay so here we are using the plus character to join a variable to a text where in the variable is a text also so it's basically a text and a text right okay that is all nice now let's use instead of um let's use numbers Okay, instead of the apple and the list, let's use one, numbers for the list. So we'll have um, five. We are going to use numbers for the list. Let me do it nice. Okay. Now, I'm going to change... Um, I'll make this number one. I'll make this. I'm just trying to change the data type, okay? I'll make this number five. This is just an example, so it's not really 
there's not much um, meaning to it, okay? It's just an example so that you know or you understand what I'm talking about. Kindly mute yourselves, please. Someone's microphone is on, I beg. And then number nine, okay. So the same way we start... The, uh, I think I have to mute the person. Okay. Now, the same way we stored the fruits, we are doing the same to the numbers. Okay, so print, right? I can say print number one. This means that it will print just one. This is the item. The item is the number one. And note that the matter. Please, who is writing on my screen? Send me a chat. Don't write on my screen, people. If you have an issue, please send me a chat. Hello? If you have an issue, please send me a chat. I want to see your question in, in the chat. Okay. Okay. Let's go on. So, over here... I am replacing the the fruit variables that we did, right? I'm replacing it with number variables, basically. Um, number nine, okay? So that when I run it, you see the numbers, right? You can see one, five, nine, okay? So it did the same thing. It stored the list of numbers inside the variable numbers, and then we, we assigned the variable numbers to three new variables called number one number five and number nine and then when we print them this is what happened now let's do some few operations okay with these so we can do something like print number one plus number five if you remember we used the plus as a way to join strings. Over here, we are using the plus as an operator to add one to five. So if I should run this, it will print six. Okay, note that because this is not a string, it's, it's an actual number. This one and five, they are actual numbers. So this character here serves as the addition that we all know in math, okay? Now, I can do a similar thing here and say number 5, right, plus number 9. Let me close this. Number 5 plus number 9. When I run it, I'll see. So, you see, the first one gives me 6 and the second one gives me 14, right? Okay. So... That is that. So the plus character can be used on the variables, but in two different ways. One, it can be used with strings where the data type is a string, right? And we are just joining the strings to form a sentence or another sentence. Or we can use it in variables that contain numbers where we use it as an actual addition. Okay? Okay. Now... The, the word or the technical word which you usually use for when you are joining strings is known as concatenation or to concatenate. To concatenate simply means to join, okay? And once in a while, you hear me use that word when we are joining strings. In fact, we'll be joining strings and other things a lot. So you might hear me use concatenate pretty often, okay? Okay.
let me pause here and let me ask if there's any question before I go on. Maybe the time might not be enough. Please, does anyone have a question based on what we've done so far? So what we've covered is we said we first started with understanding indentation or what indentation does in your Python program. We then did commenting, okay, how to comment in your Python program, single line and multi-line. We also did data types. We then went to data types. We spoke about strings, integer, floats, complex lists, sets, tuple, dictionary, boolean, and range. Um, I started using print to output things onto the shell so that you could see it. Then we introduced variables, right? I introduced variables. I showed you how to create a, first of all, what a variable is, how to create a variable, some of the wise ways to create a variable, some of the rules that you need to take note of, how to create a multi-word variable. If you are using multiple words for to, to name that variable, how do you do that? I showed you the camel case approach and the snake case approach. Then we looked at assigning a value to a variable. Okay, how do I assign a value to a variable? The simple way, how to do it in multiple assigning. That's if you have three variables and three values, how do you assign those three values to these three variables? And then we tried doing assigning one value to multiple variables, but there was a little issue. And I said I'll address it later. And then we did unpacking a list into variables. So we created a list of items, um, a list of fruits, and then we assigned those fruits to three variables. Then we created a list of numbers, of three numbers, and we assigned those numbers to different variables as well. And in both cases, we output those um, values. Then we also, in addition, we also did if you want to join strings using the plus character or the join character. And then we saw another way of using the join character as an addition. That's when you have to deal with numbers or when you are dealing with numbers, you use the addition also. And then I mentioned concatenation that when you are joining strings, it's known as what? Concatenation or to concatenate. And then that is where we are right now. Does anyone have a question that I can directly answer to if there's anything that you are confused about? I'll be glad to now dig in. So, so there's a time for you to ask a question so that I can dig into any um, individual issues that you faced when I was um, teaching.